my darlings how are you i am lisa and this series is called 26 ways to draw a letter now we're getting close to the end this time we're gonna do the letter x okay like two diagonal lines crossing each other basically in 26 different ways now either you can draw the letters that you come up with in your head all by yourself or while watching the video or you can download and print the practice sheet that is linked in the description if you want to draw exactly like I do when I did it. Either way is fine. Grab a piece of pens. I have a piece of pens. Grab a couple of pens or either just one. One is fine. I often use two because I like a thinner version for you know the more detailed work the small small lines that i put in here and there but it's ab absolutely not a requirement you can easily do this with one pen only either way pen paper and some peace and quiet perhaps around you and let's do 26 ways of the letter Yes, okay, the letter X, right. Using the size eight and size 12 of the Secura Pigment Macros, my go-tos, as you probably know by now. So two diagonal lines, basically, just a cross of sorts. At first I thought we could make it a little bit irregular. You know how I have a thing for irregularity, like that. So no one ever said that there was a law that the two lines need to look the same. No, because they don't. So here's the first X with one straight and thin line and one thick and bent one. Almost looks like it's walking or running. Okay, keeping the irregularity, as you can see, Here's another one. Let's just, uh, I think I need to fill in, like make the lines a little bit thicker. I'm not gonna fill it in. I'm just, I wanted to make sort of more of a mark. So I'm um, just thickening the outline of this block letter. Oops, sorry about that. There, like. And if you really like the irregularity, like I do, you can enhance that by making some lines thicker than the others. Um, talking about irregularity, it's already a theme, it seems. Here's something that looks like a starfish <laughs> or something. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure you remember, and I don't blame you if you don't, but for the letter A, I did the skeleton bones kind of version, and we're doing it now as well. Much easier, though, when there's only two bones to handle. Um, keeping the... Hmm, I'm thinking about one thick line there and a thin one but with the same sort of pattern or ornament like there what and Still kind of dig in the thin and the thick line kind of thing. So I'm doing one more. I'm not thinking that they should even ever meet or cross. There. Mm. Like dying or really big and sort of sloppy flowers 
growing like that. We make an X to right, and perhaps I should add some leaves as well. Mm, one more and uh, one more like that. Um, hmm, I just like the starfish one above. I'm sort of liking that we can put two lines on top of each other and they're like transparent so you can see through almost like an x-ray sort of thing i am really not sure that you're following but i will just keep drawing maybe you see in this case i haven't put one line under the other um they are transparent, I think, with black lines in them. Okay, let's just let's just proceed. Okay, here's a beautiful X. It's a butterfly, right? Beautiful, soft X and. To enhance the butterfly, I need to draw this line in the middle. Perhaps I shouldn't have done that because now it definitely does not look like an X. Anyways, doing a curly swirly thing here. Down and curls. And similar here. Trying not to make any curls look the same, as you can see. Because, you know, irregularity. Okay, so let's make a block with some sort of pattern. And I think I'll just do some line work, I think. Nothing too hard or weird. Just a reason to get the size 8 and do some wavy lines. This is really my this is my way of meditating. <laughs> Drawing these kind of lines, it's like I do it without having to think too much about it, and yet I can't think of anything else than this. So it's a perfect mindfulness exercise for me. Highly recommend. And there's nothing like right or wrong. It's just a bunch of lines that are intertwined and bent a little bit. And considering the next one, I'm thinking that we should abandon this pattern, playful appearance and go for the one that I love so much. Two, which is, you know it by now. It's this banker of a letter, you know, a letter that looks like it works in the bank. With a suit, a tie, and brushed shoes, little to no sense of humor. But it's, and no matter if you come in to the bank early or late, or even if he works in the garden on a Sunday. Still has like the same appearance. This is a letter that doesn't screw up, that doesn't get dirty, that doesn't make mistakes. I don't like those kind of persons in real life, but I do like letters that impersonate them. 
Um, hmm. Okay, let's make a letter with a very high waist and super long legs. That. Hmm. I like that, actually. So, this is an X that you have put in a, a box, like a rectangle, almost like a square box, and you just carved four V's out of it. Like the letter V. One V there, right? That makes an X. Could have put some shade on that. Oh, maybe next time. So this will be... I don't know what it will be. Ooh! Like, what's it called? Pliers? Yeah, definitely. Just had to, like, assemble it with a screw. There. Pliers. Uh, next up is... Um, Pearls on a string. Uh, in Sweden, some of us that are old enough, we actually pick wild strawberries and put them on a straw. So if you could just imagine these being red and not black, that is pretty much what they look like when they're on the straw. You put them on a straw so you can carry them home and eat them with cream and some sugar and they are not big they are very small but they taste amazing uh, anyways a soft block letter perhaps we can add some lines or shade here so the shade is coming from the right Seems that the light is shining on the left. That, and I'm just repeating this. I know that you know this already, but to some of you who are new to the shading techniques, it's all about deciding where the light comes in because that will decide where the shade or the shadow should fall. Okay, watch me go here. I'm I'm thinking like four giant boxes. Let's see if I can like transform this thought inside my head to an actual picture. So I was thinking four boxes that should be connected, but you can see by now that that would be very hard to connect them from one opening to another. Okay, I'm gonna have to go to plan B. I don't know what plan B is. Well, well I think I know. Bad. So, if I'm just filling these boxes in so that they are all closed. Massive. If I do that first, I could connect them in a slightly different way than I thought. And then we could have a small X with the biggest snap serifs. It's like a tiny, tiny ant wearing the, the biggest shoes, you know, like clown shoes, something like that. And do you remember how I said many times that you need to fill the letters in to get the weight in place before you know if you should add something, tweak a little bit or so, or whatever. So this is a perfect example of that because now that you have, now that you can see them, the boxes, you can also see the mismatch or the imbalance in the negative space, which I'm fixing now. Everything is much clearer. There's not so much to hide behind. And it's all filled in. Great. Okay, so here's my serifs. And now we just need the size 8 to make the actual letter. <laughs> so, 
There's a tiny X with huge sir, slab serrates. Yeah, so another X that is formed often in everyday life is the crossing of the fork and the knife. Uh, which also, at least in Sweden, is the symbol of a restaurant. Unlike road signs and stuff. Cross knife and fork. And so there's a, an X, obviously, and perhaps it's also we're gonna put them on a plate, right? There, almost, almost round. <laughs> Okay, so I completed a different kind of X. You know how I did the these two flowers that were like overgrown or dying or whatever. I'm not like giving up on the nature vibes here, so I'm making an X out of five flowers. They're just connected through stems or lines or whatever. Uh, a tip is to, like I did, you you sort of draw the points, the bullets first to ensure that everything will be somewhat symmetrical and then you add the petals oh I just I just thought of another uh, symbol or a very very common X uh, in everyday life hmm I'm gonna say that one for a little bit I think but first I'm gonna finish this one. Um, and then there's the banners that has they have been following us throughout this series as well. So an X can easily be made by two banners crossing each other right and yeah i'm not sure if you can see it yes you can but irregularity seems to stick around <laughs> It's a constant theme here. Uh, anyways, let's make these kind of shades on the letters. And as you can see, I have turned the lamp on from the upper right corner this time. So the shade is falling to the left and below the lamp. Okay. Okay, here's the other one that I was thinking about when I saw the fork and knife. Here's another everyday thing that we all use. Not every day, but at least every now and then. That is actually an X, sort of. Okay, so let's mm, gonna, so let's see what it is. Her scissors, right? There. Look. And I need to 
like that. One, two, three, four to go, okay? Um, so, thinking geometrical shapes, I am using four rectangles and a circle. Oh, it almost looks like the symbol for... Is there something with nuclear? Like nuclear weapons or something? <laughs> okay, so this video took a, took a turn. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't look exact. There's something that... Uh, I know that it's black and, and yellow. I'm not sure that it looks exactly like this, but there's something... It really resembles... Oh, I'm gonna have to look it up afterwards. So, uh, welcome to the the happy the happy YouTube series <laughs> where we draw nuclear weapon symbols. Uh, okay, three to go. So this X um, is I don't know. I'm thinking of a block letter with some sort of. I'm gonna fill it in with what. Starting with it's so stupid that I'm going this way because this letter is so irregular, so it's gonna be hard to okay. I'm just gonna have to keep on doing this. So filling these boxes in. As you could see, I was using the finer fine liner the size 8 to draw these boxes that would be very hard with this size 12 on the other hand filling stuff in and coloring stuff is much faster with a bigger tip like the size 8 so what do I do now should I oh, this really is a weird letter okay I'm just gonna draw a couple of more boxes <laughs> yeah so and I'm gonna have to fill them in too oh this is stupid this is a really really weird letter okay but there it is and now we have only two more to go uh, okay, keeping it simple here. One, two lines, and one, two, and that's it. It's easy to forget the simple ones when you're trying to like outdo yourself with by coming up with all those weird-looking ones. Sometimes you don't have to, like, try so hard. Don't forget the easy ones. Uh, so this is the last X. It's a serif version. I'm just going to fill in it. It looks like the serif looks like hooves. Like, you know, horses feet <laughs> or something like that. Okay, my dears, that is 26 different versions of the letter X. Thank you so much for watching.